Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, this is, this new video is going to show you how to install a sound card. And the sound card is, is basically like any other PCI card. So if you want to put a modem in or a sound card or whatever, this will basically be the same thing as that, but this geared specifically for the sound card. Because uh, one of my subscribers, Daniel Q, has been trying to get his sound to work and uh, I connected to him using that log me in remote control program tuned his computer up a little bit but I still couldn't get his sound to work. I figured his chip was bad so he went out and bought a new audio card and I made this video to show him how to install the card you know put it in his computer and plug it in and get everything all working again so um, if you've been wanting to upgrade your audio card maybe you know Maybe you've got onboard sound that's not too great, which sometimes it's not. It's just basic sound. This, uh, this will show you how to install your a new sound card. So I um, hope you all doing great, and enjoy the video. I'll talk to you later. There's a couple different types of sound cards. But basically, they're all going to be PCI, which you can tell from where the slot is. And you've got some very vari variations of color. The speaker's usually green. The line in is blue, and your mic is pink. This happens to be two channels, so it's got two outs. It's got a front out and a rear out. And your game port for your joystick. They're all basically the same. They're going to plug in the same. And, of course, you've got your installation CD. If you don't have this... Uh, you look on the chip and it'll tell you what kind of sound card it is. It's like this one it says CMI8738. You type that into Google or HSP56. Type that into Google and that'll take you to um, the manufacturer's website eventually when you search around and you get the latest drivers for it. I took this motherboard out of another computer so we can get a better look. And what's going on here? And you see the card, it's got the little slot in it. it lines up with the slot in the motherboard. Like that. And you do want to be careful. You want to be careful not to bend any of these points, the solder points on the bottom. And you want to be careful not to put any fingerprints on the chips. You want your chip to be clean. Fingerprints on these acts like grease. Well, it is grease. And it'll cause the chip to heat up. So when you're handling the board, you got to be really careful. You put the card in. Make sure it's kind of level. And just push it down real even and you'll see it plugs right in. Okay, it makes it easier if you lay your computer down. I've already laid this one down on its side because when you push on the card you know you want something to push against instead of trying to hold your tower at the same time. You've got a couple different types of, of retainers in here for your cards. Some of them have this, so we're going to pull this off. I guess first you should take your, your card and kind of line it up with the PCI slot that you're going to put it in and figure out which one of these you have to take off because it's going to be different, you know. And it just kind of lifts up a little bit and you take it right out. You see it's got that tab at the at the bottom that plugs into a little slot down here you'll see it when you look closer I can't really get a fix on it with the video but it plugs into a little slot down there to keep it from moving around like like that so when you take your card kind of set that it's up above the PCI slot and kind of set it all the way in where it's got to go line it up with the PCI slot Wiggle around a little bit and make sure you're in. And just push it down. 
kind of wiggle it around a little bit and you'll feel it find its home and just push it down in there you don't have to push real hard if you have to push real hard something's not right and just take a look and see what's going on but you'll feel it you'll feel it plug in and of course put the screw back in Now we'll need to boot the computer and install the software. Okay, right away it's going to say found new hardware, found the multimedia audio controller. Now at this point you want to put the CD in the CD-ROM, software CD. Okay, wait for the application device to come up. Here's where you have to decide whether you want the control panel that comes with your sound card or not. Most people don't use it. It's just an extra program that's running that you don't need. Um, the only time you need it is if you want to you know, tweak your sound and um, play with the different reverbs and stuff that come with it. Go ahead and install it if you want. Maybe uninstall it later. Um, you see it gives you the option to install the application or install the device driver. All we're going to do here is install a device driver. Then it's going to ask you to restart your computer. Okay, after we restarted, this one came up with a, an application. It wants to know if I'm going to use a two-channel or four-channel, and that decide that depends on what speaker system you have. I'm going to use a two-channel and leave it set up for that. Okay, if your sound is still not working, right-click my computer, click up Properties. That'll open your system properties window. I'm going to click on the hardware tab. Find the device manager button. And that'll list all the devices that are on your computer. And go down to sound and make sure that your audio device is installed. There's the one we just installed. Now if it's missing a driver or something like that, you'll have an exclamation point. Um, next to it then that means it's either got a problem with the device or it's missing the driver now you can right click on that and choose update driver and that'll bring up your hardware wizard you can uh, it'll ask you if you want to search online you can either click yes don't don't click that one because it won't ask you anymore um, but click yes to search online or no not at this time and we have the CD in the CD-ROM player already so we're going to click no at this time and we'll click next now you can let it search for the software automatically or because we know where the driver is it's on the CD we're going to tell it to search a specific location so we're going to click that one next now in here we're going to go to browse and click on the CD that contains the software and click OK. That'll search that CD for the software. Now if it doesn't find the driver on that CD you might have to go back in and, and actually refine the search like Windows 2K, 2000, Windows 98. Um, so it's got Windows 98 if you run an XP, click on XP. You know, and there's the application, there's the driver. A little more pinpointed search for where the driver is located, and then click OK. And it'll search that location. Sometimes you have to do that, sometimes you don't. With Windows 98, you definitely have to do that. 